What is up, everyone? We're going to be doing a walkthrough of the new Tesla app update that just released for Android. This has been out for iPhone for a little bit, but after looking at both, these are the same. So this update, this is going to be walking through controlling this for your solar and or power wall setup. First initial impressions, not that this is an impressions video. Um, I am a fan of the older one. I do think while this may look slick, um, I'm a fan of the performance uh, upgrade. So like the speed, uh, as well as outside of solar access to your vehicle without your vehicle being selected, just consistent access to the car because sometimes you're stuck out of the car, you can't get in. Like that's all great, but they could have added that to the old app. Um, some new functionality here is this go off grid item. And then the way this everything is displayed is, is very refreshed. Um, but in general, what you're looking at right now, it is uh, it just hit peak time. And so what should be happening is my power wall should be discharging if my home requires more than the solar is able to supply. But you can see I'm generating 4.9 and using 4.9 exactly. So there's nothing pulled from the grid, which is what you see down here, as well as zero coming from the power wall. Now my air conditioning is off and if I were to go into my nest and turn that on, I have a dryer running, the TV running, the AC, I have it set, and if I lower that to 73, this is going to kick on the AC in a moment. And as you can see, it's on, and we should immediately see the Tesla app reflect that. So now we've got five kilowatts uh, pulling from the power wall. The home is using 7.5. Um, so this is interesting behavior. Like this is something that you're going to have to experiment with your app and, and what should actually be happening is I should be pulling 4.8 from solar and then the remaining of the 8.1 so 3.2 should be coming from the power wall but in reality we're actually pushing some to the grid there we go it finally updated sometimes this takes a second so we're pulling the difference there's zero pulling from the grid we were pushing some to the grid but my peak time is between 2 p.m and 8 p.m and that's what we're seeing right now is this behavior. And so to set that up, so that's how to read for the house. This is not my house. It's a generic house on everyone's app is we have these settings. So we can see how much energy I've generated, uh, how much impact, basically what percentage of your power was offset by what you generated versus what you used. And then if we go into settings, this is going to really help determine how to set your uh, time of use plan, meaning if you have different rates throughout your day uh, in Arizona in during peak time for at least for SRP, it's between two and eight in the summer. And then we actually have two um, peak times in the winter, which is really annoying. So half the year, it's five to nine in the morning and five to nine at night, which the app actually doesn't support multiple peaks. Most of the world over 90% only has one peak all year round, which makes things easier. But generally what you're looking at is a reserve. So I can set the reserve to change, meaning the battery will never drop below this percentage. Um, and the reason why you would wanna do that is because you do wanna leverage the battery in some cases to help you save money by discharging at night so you're not using the grid all the time. But you also don't wanna, in some cases, deplete that all the way to zero in the event of an unexpected outage, even for five minutes, for five hours, you want to know that, hey, yeah, I might be using the battery, but if I can deplete it only to 10% or in their recommended, which I believe is 20%, I at least can run my fridge and my appliances throughout the night. I can't run the AC or heavy electrical usage appliances like your range or dryer or washer or any of that, but at least your food won't spoil and you can keep the lights on and 20% uh, power is a few kilowatts and that can hopefully sustain you for a few hours. Um, so that would be the reason to set the reserve. Then as we scroll down, there's other settings. Self-powered, if I were to set that, would mean I want to run, as long as this mode is on, as the power wall is full, I will deplete it. It doesn't matter about peak or off-peak. It's if in the moment, if I'm drawing power, I want to be as self-powered as possible, and I will use all the solar and all the power wall that I can if the home needs it, and only stop when we hit the reserve. The time-based control is an advanced setting, but it's highly recommended. If you're in an area where you have um, time of uh, different peak times where it's cheaper rates off-peak and more expensive on-peak, this is what you'll select. Then you can select 
uh, that window. So right now I have two to eight and then eight to two is off peak. So if I click edit, this lets you see that. So I have a weekday setting. Uh, so in Arizona and most other places, your weekday has peak and off peak and then weekends is all off peak. So by having that setting, you don't have to worry. It'll just discharge and, and act accordingly and keep your power wall fully charged and just draw from the grid. Uh, and solar as needed without worrying that it's a it's pretty much a one-to-one -one net metering for SRP on the weekends and off peak. And so I have that set. During the weekday, you can set that and it says add a new rate period, but it's grayed out. I can't actually do that. So if I were to remove one, I could change it. Um, or if you don't haven't set one up yet, that's where you'll be able to add a new rate period. So let's go back and let's continue. Stormwatch is another one. Something to keep in mind. So Stormwatch in general is a pretty decent item to have on most of the time. There are some exceptions where having this on may actually hurt you. If you're in an area like uh, Arizona, where we have SRP as a utility that charges a significant fee for pulling from the grid during on peak, like a lot of money, um, Stormwatch could potentially hurt you in some scenarios where when Tesla gets an alert from the National Weather Service that says, for non-flood emergencies, so flash flooding does not trigger this. This is the one situation where the power wall will pull from the grid to charge. So in general, right now, when you buy solar and power wall together, in 99% of scenarios, it, the power wall can only charge from solar. Unless you have a power wall, which they do not sell individually anymore, the power wall can only charge from solar because that's the only way the federal tax credit applies is if your backup battery is charged on fully renewable energy is the only way for that to work. The exception of that is an emergency, but flash flooding apparently doesn't count. So even though you'll get Amber alerts, your Alexa, your things will tell you like sky's falling, um, this storm watch will not trigger, which enables the power wall to start charging from the grid because the sun might be down, there might be cloud cover, storms, you're not generating any power and your power wall is depleted. It makes sense to enable an emergency is, hey, pull from the grid while it's still working because the grid might conk out you know, later on. But I reached out to Tesla and they said flash flooding is just not part of the alerts that they will accept to enable this, probably because in some instances, if your house floods or your power wall gets flooded, that's a bad thing. And having a charged battery is probably worse than having a discharged battery. And um, that's what was told to me. But that the reason why it's a downside is sometimes this needs to charge and it happens to be a peak time. So if this is on, it'll bypass your time of use settings and charge from the grid because it's an emergency and maybe you're okay with that. But sometimes you get the alert and there's absolutely amazing weather. There's absolutely no risk. Your power wall's charging. It's pulling from peak times. You're getting billed a ton of money and the grid never goes out. And that might be risky. So turning this off may, uh, it's just something to be aware of. If you think a storm is coming, um, check to see what time it is and the level of risk you're willing to take. So Stormwatch uh, will automatically kick in when it gets the alert. So this is the other item, which I don't really use my power wall. I only have one, so I don't use it to charge my vehicle, but it does allow you to reserve some to charge a vehicle. But if the power wall is below a certain amount, it just won't. So you can set that item uh, here when, when off grid, if you want it powered uh, for your vehicle. Sometimes that can deplete your battery very quickly. And if you don't want that to happen, you set the separate reserve here. Now, this other item is really interesting is go off grid. I haven't used this setting uh, and you need to pair your phone to kind of control that so you can actually manage that as well. The reason why you might want to do that is a lot of people haven't experienced an outage. They're not sure how the power wall will be used. Like, how does the home work? Like, let's actually, this is a way Tesla, according to their site, allows you to test and pretend that there's an outage without there actually being one. So you can have grid access if you need to, but you can simulate how long the battery lasts in a typical situation and how it's currently set up. In my case, we didn't set up my electric range for backup because I would just deplete the battery and I have no use for it. But those are things that you may not know until the grid goes down. So it's really important to know in an emergency how your systems are working. So you can simulate that with this go off grid feature. Really cool thing that they added, I think will help with preparations for a lot of people. And when we leave settings, we have other items here. We've, Tesla has also added access to your documents. So this just means any documents related to solar that you have. So that will all be here and you can see mine as well. If we go back, we can also see the support, which pretty much just takes you to the quick links for support that will lead to their support center. So you can see items there. And then from 
outside of that, when we click into energy, we can see the graph. So what you're looking at is the today's view and you can swipe to see the previous day, swipe again, to see the previous day before that. And the blue means this is what your home has pulled from the grid. Has nothing to do with how much your solar produced and you used from your battery or your solar or from the grid. It's just your home in total needed this much energy. And then when we click on solar, you can see this is the specific generation, which you can see right now it starts about 6 a.m. with the current sun and we peak around noon before it starts to fall. And then for the power wall, what you're looking at is the solar pretty much it's regenerating. So when it's above the line, it's discharging, meaning you're, you're, you're pulling from the battery. And then uh, below is um, how much we are feeding the battery. In this case, the solar was feeding that. At the bottom is a new thing they added, which is the charge level. Like kind of when did it get to uh, over time, what state of charge was it with another information on how much you generated from solar, how much discharge, and what percentage you are self-powered. And then the last one is the grid usage. As you can see, I've pulled a lot from the grid since midnight. That's when I charge. And then I have sporadic items with the air conditioning, garage AC, and other things kicking on. And then the negative is, at that point in time, I was pushing energy back to the grid to kind of offset my usage. And then at the top here, there's filters for the day view, week view, which you can then see for all these items. Month, view, year, and even lifetime megawatts, which is pretty great. The other item up here is an overlay. So you can actually see other items overlaid on top of what you're looking at. So next to the day. So if I click on that, you can see that of the day's power wall usage, what else made that up is the solar charged it. And then from the home, this was my usage. So it's showing you other data points on top of that particular area. If I go to solar, Yes, it shows my generation, but it also shows, hey, even though I was making um, solar at that time, how much did my home pull and how much of it was supplied by uh, the power wall? I don't like this view that much. I thought the previous app was way more simple and straightforward. You could actually overlay all four of these items all at the same time from one view without four separate tabs, um, enabling or disabling that. Like it just feels a little different. And that might just be part of the change curve with just getting used to something that's new. I just got this yesterday. And while it's usable, like some things that I can't see that it used to provide me is if you can see we are now in a peak period. So that's why you see some of this is highlighted in the lighter gray and some of this is dark. It's kind of highlighting the peak area. And maybe this will show um, shortly, but like I can't actually see how much power I use during peak time. Like I need to know that because of SRPs, the way they charge. Maybe if I go to yesterday, if we look at this, I have used some power from the grid and the day before. And I can't see right there. I used. You can see that spike. This is during peak, and I am being charged extra from SRP for that. But I have no idea how much that was. It used to say on the last app, like, this is how much you pulled from peak usage. But there's just no way to see that information anymore, which is really annoying. And now I have to log into SRP's site to, for them to tell me how much peak usage. I just have to kind of, like, eyeball it and kind of guess, which is, like, it's, it's ridiculous that I would have to do that. So I don't know why they would have taken that away, but it's really important to know um, that information if you're in a situation like mine or care to know it. Like, even though most may not want that, like why take it away? It doesn't, it's not uh, too helpful. So when we go back, so that was the energy uses. The impact kind of brings up some old graphs that we saw in the previous app. It's in a nice view. You can see just from like a, a circle graph, a visual digestible way, like how much you're using from solar, power and the grid. And maybe this gives me an idea. Um, so as an example, it actually kind of uh, lets me know my time of use. Peak, I used 1.9 kilowatts. I'm like, oh no, that's a problem because two kilowatts is expensive. But of that, the grid only used 3% of that. So I don't actually see the numbers. Maybe this is a better view for me, but I was able to see this page and the other one kind of combined from a single view and now they're in two separate places and i still don't know what three percent of two kilowatts is like i could do the math in my head but like before it would just tell you the number because that's how when you get your invoice from srp like that's how they're billing you is like what is your average on peak usage and from here this looks pretty scary it looks like two which would be if i average that every day it'll be a 40 plus dollar charge from srp 
but in reality, it's something else. Or like yesterday, it says 20. That looks scary when you, but then you break it down and say, like, oh, it was like 98% of it wasn't from the grid. I used 20, but half came from solar and half from the power wall. And then 2% was pulled from the grid because I exceeded the power walls limit. So just something that's just a little annoying that that is now um, something that I, it's, it's harder to see visually, but you know, it is what it is. At the top, you can see there's a discharge. Uh, so it's just showing you right now that things are happening that way. Um, but right now we've got 93%. So as I've been talking, we've discharged 7% of the battery. And now I'm glad I'm on here right now. This is a problem. I've got the AC running and the dryer and it's exceeding my limit. So the power wall can only pull five kilowatts at a time. The newer one can spike to I think six or seven uh, if you've gotten one in the last um, this year and then going forward. But from there, now I'm gonna want to turn off my AC since we're done with this test. And I just paid who knows how many dollars in the last few minutes. Um, for running this test. So this should turn off the AC. And then when we go back to the app, you should see the grid go down to zero, which it has. And now the solar um, is enough to cover the usage in combination with the power wall. So we're discharging seven and a half since the dryer, which is an electric one, takes such uh, a lot of power. Um, so I hope that was helpful with this test. The other items here, if you click the top right, is your profile. And this is where you can see your vehicles, if you have them, your solar, and then even shop access, which you can buy apparel and other things from your cart. And this is also where you access the referral program. Again, is the loot box and some other items. But this was mainly a solar and power wall app walkthrough. Thanks for listening. If you have any questions, throw them in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Take care.